Alright, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, I've seen some confusion about this. So there are two pro shows this weekend. There's the Legion Sports Festival, which is in the US. It's in Las Vegas. Then there's also a show in Italy, the Tsunami Nutrition Pro. So I've seen a lot of people comment and message me saying that James and Mark are doing the Legion show, which is also this weekend, and that's not true. They are competing this weekend. They're competing at the Italy show. So it's going to be um, Alfred, Vlad, Shiriak, Muhammad El Imam, Jamie Christian Jahal is not doing it, even though he's on the list. He actually is doing the Legion Sports Festival. Mark Hector is doing it. Enrique Hoffman is doing it. James Hollingshead is in. Kile Kujala is in, William Martins, Milan Sadek, and Jan Turek. So obviously the two big names that stand out there. Or we kind of get to see this rematch between Mark Hector and James Hollingshead. Mark looking for some redemption after last weekend's show where he was runner-up to Patrick Johnson. A really solid placing from a pretty decent look for him. I still think he looked tighter at the Arnold Classic UK, but that was a solid runner-up placing for him. And I think um, I think this is going to be a really good battle between him and James. And I think we're going to have some exciting stuff to watch this weekend because not only do you have this... You've got Legion, and you've also got the Olympia Amateur that Michael Crizzo is doing. All three of those things are happening this weekend. So, good opportunity to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel for coverage of all three of those shows. So, that is the competitor list for the Tsunami Nutrition Pro. That is the Italy show. And this is the Legion Sports Festival lineup. So, again... Um, James and Mark are not doing Legion. They're doing it at least. So, Tony Burton, Jamie Christian Jahal, Stan DeLongu, Rafael Del Real, Stephen Frazier, Iron Golly, Carlos Rodriguez Hernandez, Kenneth Jackson, Eric Langlois, Jojo Natifro, Jorge Abraham, Trejo Reyes, Carlos Emmanuel Longorio Rodriguez, and Justin Rodriguez, which I think is the biggest name and the biggest announcement being in that lineup. You've also got Pavel Vashenko and Todd Whiting. Um, also going to be there in Las Vegas. So very exciting weekend for bodybuilding. I'm looking forward to all these shows, and I hope you guys are as well. Let me know your predicted outcomes for all of them. And do you think Crizzo is going to earn his pro card this weekend? And speaking of Michael Crizzo, he did just post another physique update on his Instagram story. Today is October 5th, and the, the actual competition where I believe he'll be stepping on the stage is October 8th for the Olympia Amateur. So this picture, if it was taken today, was him three days out. And again, I'll say the same thing that I've said about the past few updates that we've seen of Crizzo. So one week, two weeks, and three weeks out. Um, I, I, I thought he was going to be a little bit tar uh, sharper and a little bit fuller um, than he looks here. And again, I think the reason for that is he's doing just enough to win this amateur show um, and not overdoing it. Not peaking for this. He wants to peak for the pro show at the end of the, at the end of the month, which is going to be the Prague Pro. I think he's going to kind of run through this show. I think he's going to win pretty easily. I think he's going to get his pro card pretty easily, um, and leave some gas in the tank for the pro show at the end of the month and not over, um, over expend himself on this show. So if we see him compete this weekend and we don't see the best version of Crizzo, but we still see him win, I wouldn't be too concerned. I wouldn't be too alarmed. I'm not expecting to see a world beater version of Michael Crizzo on this Olympia amateur stage because he's competing against amateurs. He's already got probably a hundred pounds more muscle um, than most of the guys on stage conditioning as long as he doesn't come in just ridiculously off. I think he wins this show easy, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, I want to talk about this latest physique update from Hunter Labrada, a front double bicep here, which for me is one of my favorite poses that Hunter hits. I think he's got a great front double. Um, I think it's almost kind of comparable to a Michael Crizzo. Um, but one of the things that I noticed here, to me, I think he looks a lot bigger than he looked last year, especially at the Olympia. If you put a side-by-side -side of him, I believe this was a pre-judging shot from the Olympia. Um, his front double from the Olympia versus front double here. Granted, in the Olympia one, he's hitting kind of a vacuum pose with the front double, and in this picture here with his dad, um, on the left-hand side, he's kind of flexing his abs, crunching his abs a little bit, so kind of a different angle. But to me, he looks significantly bigger. If you look at his legs, his quads look significantly rounder. Um, his biceps look a little bit more peaked and a little bit thicker. His arms overall look thicker. Um, his lats, to me, look like they're flaring even wider um, in this latest shot. And we know that size was a big focus for him um, on this year's offseason and this prep for the Olympia to compete with guys um, like Nick Walker, Big Rami, Hadi Chupin. And that's why I really feel that Hunter has a pretty difficult road ahead of him um, trying to crack into that top three because he was fourth place last year. And I think this is kind of the difficult thing that everybody trying to crack or move higher um, is going to have is the top three is a very, very solid top three. Hadi Chupin has some of the craziest conditioning that we've seen in recent years at the Olympia. I say the past two years, he was the most conditioned guy in the whole show. I, I stand by that. Hadi Chupin is a very tough third-place guy to get past because he's got a ton of size, and he's always in shape. 
So if you didn't beat them last year, what can you do to beat them this year? That's the question that a lot of these guys are asking because Hadi Chupin is the barrier to enter that top three. You've got to beat Hadi to even get a shot at Brandon um, and Rami. And I honestly feel like Hadi has set that bar pretty dang high. So that's the question Hunter Lebron is asking himself. And right now, um, he looks a lot bigger. He looks like he has put on some size. I'm sure he has made some significant improvements. I'm curious to see what his back looks like. That's one of the things that I would like to see him bring up the most. Um, but Hunter, I think, is looking extremely dangerous here. And I'm excited to see what he's able to put together for the Olympia come December. Like I said, I think right now we're about 10 weeks out. Now, next up in the news, some classic physique, physique updates, and a very interesting classic physique collaboration, the Miracle Bear. Urs Kalsinski collaborating with one of his biggest rivals, Rough Diesel, Terrence Ruffin. Um, it looks like they're both down there in Florida. Urs, I think, looks extremely impressive here. Again, we're around 10 weeks out from the Olympia, um, and in these shots, they're comparing legs. His legs look really good, really separated. I would say more so, um, even more separated than Terrence's in these shots, which is pretty impressive considering he hasn't beaten Terrence yet. The other thing that I noticed pretty quickly is the, the, the height difference between him and Terrence is pretty impressive. I didn't realize that Urs was that tall. I thought he was 5'11", um, but in these pictures at least, he looks significantly taller uh, than Rough Diesel. And if you look at the second photo here in this series, one thing that I was extremely impressed with from Urs is that, again, this far out from the Olympia, and it's not that far, we're getting closer but he's got cross striations in his quads, and granted, he's hitting a little bit of a different angle for that quad pose than Terrence is hitting, so you can't see any cross striations in Terrence's legs, but he's not flexing his quads the same way that Urs is, so I wouldn't say that he doesn't have any. He's just not flexing it that way. But one of the things that has impressed me most about Urs on stage is his conditioning. He is extremely conditioned. He's been pretty consistent with that conditioning, and for him to have these cross striated quads here at this point in his Olympia prep, um, I think is an indicator that he's going to bring that same crazy conditioning, if not better, to the Olympia. I think Urz is a very, very serious threat in classic physique, and I could see him moving up a couple of placings this year, and I think classic, to me, is becoming almost more interesting than men's open bodybuilding. These guys... There's so many young up-and-comers in classic physique that are so, so talented. Urs is one of them, extremely young guy, moving up very quickly in the classic physique ranks. Um, Ramon Dino, another one, kind of came out of nowhere. And countless other names. I mean, I think there's like, what, 30 guys in the classic physique Olympia that are qualified right now, if not more than that. And a lot of them are really, really good. Wesley just qualified, for example. It's, it's like a sea of talent in classic physique. And you never know what's going to happen. These guys come out of nowhere and end up being extremely competitive at the Olympia. So any of these guys with this lineup being so deep, um, it's just a very, it's a very exciting division. And I'm really glad they ended up creating this division. I think there's a lot of talent that was a perfect fit for it. And I think Urs and Terrence are a perfect example of that. And the final story that I want to include here is a uh, six weeks out physique update for Brett Wilkin. Now he is going to be competing in the Romania Muscle Fest Pro towards the end of the year. I'm not entirely sure. I, I think it might be right before the cutoff for the Olympia qualification. So I still think there's a chance that Brett could win that show and qualify, but I think it's right up on that deadline. So it's kind of a last minute one that a lot of really good bodybuilders might jump in because anybody that hasn't qualified at that point, that's that's pretty much their last opportunity to do so. So Brett, to me, looking very impressive. He looks to have added some size as well. Um, very round and full throughout the arms and chest. But I think at the Arnold Classic, you know, there was a lot of hype behind Brett. And I think there was two things that really went wrong with Brett or two things that were lacking that we were expecting to see. One was I don't think he was conditioned as a lot of people were expecting. I think a lot of people wanted to see him come in sharper. And two, I think he looked a little flat. And, and I guess the third one would be um, a little bit of watery lack of definition in the midsection. It looked like he just didn't completely nail his peak for that show, but he's got a great structure. He's got a great physique. Like I said, he looks to have added some size. He's competitive from a size uh, perspective. I think if Brett can nail his peak, he's he can be an extremely competitive bodybuilder. I think he can be a show winner. I think he could be a top 10 Olympian. Um, but we just got to see him really hit that 100% peak. And Romania is going to be the show where we see whether or not he does that prior to the Olympia. So that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like, leave a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not subscribed already, click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. 
My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day. Dancing in the gloom Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Every Dancing in the good light Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Everybody's dancing in the good